Welcome to Precision Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 4 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss more about controllers in an MVC application. Please watch part 3 before proceeding with this video because we'll be continuing with the example that we started in part 3. Now, if you notice this URL right here, this URL invokes the index action method within the home controller class. So how are these URLs mapped to the correct controller action methods? How does the application know to do that? The answer is ASP.NET Routing. Let's practically understand this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Now let me actually run this project. Uh, we started this in part 3 of this video series and notice uh, you know the URL at the moment it doesn't even have the name of the controller and the action method all we have is the server which is localhost and then the name of the virtual directory which is MVC demo I don't have the controller name and the action method name but still the application successfully invoked the index function within the home controller class so does so how does the application know to do that if you look at global.asax Notice that we have this event handler method here, application underscore start. This event gets executed when the application first starts. Okay, so we discussed about you know events within global.asax in our ASP.NET video tutorial. So if you're new to them, please watch that video. Okay, so within this event, we have a call to register routes method that's present in route config class. And if you look at this folder here, app underscore start, it has got this class route config. If I actually right click on that register routes and then go to definition, look at that, it comes to route config class, which is defined within our, um, you know, this file route config.cs, which is present in app underscore start folder. And within this class, we have this register routes method. Pay attention to this line right here. So here, look at the name, it says default, meaning this is the default route. And look at the URL pattern right here. Okay, so we have a controller, forward slash action, forward slash ID. Okay, but then if you look at the URL right here, it doesn't have the controller name and the action method name. So how is it invoking the index function of the home controller class? That's because we have defaults specified within this default route. So if I don't pass in a controller name, then it's going to invoke the home controller by default. And then if I don't specify an action method, it's going to invoke the index function. So look at this. Here at the moment, we didn't specify the controller name and the action method name. So by default, it's going to use the home controller and the index action method. So look at this. I am now passing just the controller name. And then when I press enter, look at that. It's going to pick up the default index function within that home controller class. So now if I pass index, then it clearly knows what function to execute. Okay, now look at this. If I don't pass anything, and then when I press enter, obviously it works because we have default specified here. Now what is going to happen if I rename this index function to index one? And then if I run this application, what do you think will happen? Obviously we'll get a 404. Because if you don't define a controller name, it's going to assume home controller. So obviously we have home controller. And then within that home controller, it's going to look for index function. But my home controller doesn't have an index function. So obviously I get an HTTP 404 status code, meaning the resource cannot be found. Okay, now let's change it back to index. Now obviously the default route right here is the controller action method and the ID. At the moment if you look at this URL, let's actually pass the home and index as well. Okay, let's rerun that after we change the name here. We didn't compile it. So let's run that and then let's specify our controller as home and the index action method. Now look at this. I am not passing an ID parameter, but still my application works because if you look at you know the route config class here, ID parameter is optional. You may or may not pass it. Now let's say I am passing an ID value of uh, maybe 10, for example, and then press enter. Um, you know, I passed in, in the URL, this value of uh, 10, for ID parameter, okay? But then let's say I want to retrieve that within this function and do something with that. 
okay is it possible absolutely and, and how do we do that it's very simple to harvest those values all you need to do is maybe I'm going to say string ID okay and then let's say I want to display a message here ID is equal to whatever is the ID that we are going to pass in okay so now let's run this so since at the moment we don't have anything passed here defaults and ID is optional so it just displays an empty string there and then obviously it is executing the home controllers index method uh, there so home index and I'm going to specify a value of 10 and then when I press enter look at that ID is equal to 10 so that value is automatically passed into this controller action method and then you can do whatever you want with that value and here basically we are returning back okay alright so if it's one value that's fine let's say for example I want to pass something in the URL like this a query string maybe I want to pass maybe name is equal to you know Prajim and then obviously I want to be in a position to retrieve that value okay from the URL and how do we do that okay with web forms it's very easy I mean we basically use request dot query string um, request objects query string property so I can simply say you know there are two ways to do that I can use the uh, very old method of using the request object so request dot query string of we can pass in the name of the query string there so I get um, the you know the value that's passed in the URL here for name which is Prajim okay let's actually format the string right here so ID is equal to ID plus name is equal to whatever we are you know retrieving from the URL so let's run this now and then let's pass you know home controller index function and name is equal to let's say Prajim look at that ID is equal to 10 name is equal to Prajim so I'm able to retrieve that values okay so one way is to actually use the request objects but uh, in MVC another way that you have is you can simply use it as a parameter within this function so string you know name notice that this parameter name matches with the name of the query string parameter here okay so now simply I can say instead of using this request objects query string name alright so now let's go ahead and run that and see what's gonna happen okay so let's pa invoke the home controllers index action method and then we are passing 10 for ID name is equal to Prajim look at that ID is equal to 10 name is equal to Prajim we get it as expected so ASP.NET MVC will automatically pass any query string of form post parameters named name to index action method when this URL that you see here is invoked. Okay, so that's how we are printing those values. Or you can use request.query string, uh, request objects query string property as here, as shown here. Okay, and if you look at this register routes function within this route config class, there's one more class here okay so it says routes dot ignore route and then it says anything any name here which is it could be anything dot axt so if there is a file request for uh, which has an extension of dot axt then ignore that that's what it's saying what does it actually mean let's understand that you know basically for example if we enable tracing for this application okay again we discussed about tracing in ASP.NET so ASP.NET concepts are still applicable for MVC okay so please watch videos on ASP.NET tracing from ASP.NET video tutorial if you are new to that concept so I'm going to enable tracing within web.config file so under system.web I can enable tracing so trace enabled is equal to true and then I don't want the trace messages to be returned to the end of the page so I'm going to say page output is equal to false so when we set page output to false and then trace enabled is equal to true the trace messages will be returned to a trace file called trace.axt so let me actually go ahead and run so that you know a trace messages are generated for few of these web forms so um, let's invoke the home controller index function okay alright 
So now look at this. Obviously there will be a trace file for this application and now if I want to you know see the trace information I can simply say trace.axt and then when I press enter I get the trace file and I can see the trace information you know for these requests which is well and good okay so now look at this the request for this file is ignored you know it's not basically passed to this default route okay I am served with that route uh, I mean with that file now what's gonna happen if I comment this and let's comment that and let's rerun this application and then let me try to request the trace.axt file and see what's gonna happen okay so I'm going to request something like trace.axt look at that it says the resource cannot be found okay that's why we need to have this line right here to handle requests for uh, axt files you know something like trace.axt or axt or script resources.axt all right this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.